Lane, when did you know that you were going to make a living playing poker? I never really knew. I mean, I, I mean, it's still a question. I mean, I don't really know. But when I came out and won my first tournament in 97, I knew I was not leaving here. They put bars up around the city. I'm, they're not letting me out. <laughs> You're sentenced to life in the desert? Pretty much. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it's, you know, once you get, you know, into that life of, you know, playing poker stuff, it's hard to get out of it. The money comes and goes, but it's fast and it's there. You know, I, you can't go work a nine-to-five job anymore. At what point did you know you were going to play poker for a living? 1998, after I won on my first tournament at the World Series. At Hall the World Series, did you? Oh, you won one at the Hall of Fame before you won one at the World yeah, Series, right? Yeah, first time I ever came to Vegas. Pot limit hold'em. No limit hold'em. Oh, it was a no limit one, and then you won. You won the pot limit. No, this was the Hall of Fame. I won the pot limit World Series in '98, '99, 2000, somewhere around there. And then that was when you figured it out that you're, you're done. You're gonna I was go, working leave, again. Leave Montana, <laughs> never work again. Yeah. N nothing. Just come straight down here and play. Yes. Perfect. When you were a dealer, did you learn a lot from watching players, or did you? Yeah, that's the best way to learn how to read people. You know, with an unbiased opinion. What, did you just start reading people when you were just in the box dealing? Yeah, I got actually pretty good at it. I started reading their hands and calling their hands before they turned it over. So they thought I was not on the square deal. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good deal. Very good deal. I'm sure you had the fastest shuffle in the West. I once dealt a game for eight hours, never shuffled the deck once, and sometimes dealt backwards around the table and never got caught. <laughs> That's how good I was. It's a true story. What advice would you have for someone that's trying to do what you do today? Play good. Just uh, be careful. It's hard. You know, they say probably less than 1% of anybody who plays poker actually can make a living at it. So it's, it's not easy. You, you know, just be... Just be very careful, you know, work your way up. Don't, don't jump in the, uh, the lake too quick. And that would be your advice, just don't jump in. Don't get me wrong, that's what I did. And that's not an easy way to go. <laughs> <laughs> I jump in at first at all times. It's just your style. Yeah, it's not recommended. It's not for everyone, don't try it. <laughs> Was there ever a moment that, that even made you nervous? Of course, there's a lot of moments. I'll give you an example. I think there's two kinds of nervous. There's the good nervous and the bad nervous. And I remember watching the final table at the World Series in what year, what was that, when, when you won the two no-limit holdings? 2002. Okay. You flopped four tens. Were you nervous at that point? Yeah, that I wouldn't get him to get, put all of his money in. <laughs> yeah, I, I kept my cool pretty good there. I mean, once, once you uh, got the good nervousness, you, nothing but good can happen. Do you remember any time having the bad nervousness? Oh yeah, I've gotten a few gut feelings that were not good. You know, when you got all your money in and you got to make a call or you're anticipating somebody else either calling or folding. And, you know, there's a, either a, being at stake or being knocked out of the tournament or not. That's, there's a lot of pressure like that, for sure. But that's what makes it fun. Of course. What is the, your accomplishment that you're the proudest about in poker? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess... Uh, making the final table in Aruba when my daughter was there to watch. That, to me, was special. And then the back-to-back -back no limits, that was always a... Yeah. Because everybody questions, you know, when you win a tournament, uh, you know, you got lucky, they could have done whatever, but to win it back-to-back in -back the, the second no limit when I, the final three were me, TJ Cloutier, and Johnny Chan, that was, a, that was a proving point. I remember that day, and you were keeping track of all the people you had all in. Oh, yeah, yeah. And what your record was. And your record in the middle of the tournament, you were actually a loser to it. Oh, yeah. I double, I'll double, either double you up or knock you out. Every time and I you, double you had doubled more people <laughs> up than you had knocked them out at that point, and you still went on to win the tournament. I remember all those things. I remember every hand. <laughs> out of all the players that you play, who do you fear the most? Lane Flack. That's, that's the truth. Nobody can hurt me worse than I can. <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> but in poker, there's nobody to really fear. Who, who, I would rather not play against Seidel and Helmuth. You think no that their, their, their no limit ability or, well, and or their hold them ability is... Yeah, any of these top players, they're, they, they're good. You know, they don't... They got a strategy of their own and they don't be rough it. They stay with it strong. It's, it, they have strategies that are hard to defend against. And they make very few mistakes. Absolutely. You know, and they read you, they know you.
Do you feel like you have to switch your game up at different times because of this? Oh, uh, 100%. I got probably, in my mind, 14 different speeds, six different strategies, and when they come together, we got a game. <laughs> <laughs> 14 speeds and six strategies. That's hard to keep for anyone to keep track of, much less an opponent. <laughs> yeah, me too. Lane, what advice would you give to someone who's trying to do what, what you do? I'd say be very cautious. You know, take take... Don't take a lot of risks early. Well, when you're young, you can take a lot of risks because you can always make up for it. But I, I suggest you not try to prove yourself too early. Just take your time, you know, and test yourself slowly. Small steps. Don't jump right into anything big soon because uh, the downfalls hurt. When did you first start playing poker? Long time ago. I, I've been playing poker for quite a while. In, uh, you know, I grew up in Montana. You only had to be 18 to play there. So I was playing then, but, uh, you know, playing in college and home games and was a kid but not you know legally i remember you telling me that you played baseball in college i didn't know i didn't play baseball in college the baseball the card game oh baseball the card game yeah. played every game in college <laughs> was that the first game you played for money was baseball no the card game no we played two or 22. two or 22. for money yeah when we actually when we went on baseball trips actual baseball two or 22. two How gets half the work? pot 22 gets half the pot face cards are worth Half a point. Closest one to two gets half, but that's one to 22. <laughs> and you draw. Who do you admire the most in poker? Mr. John Hennigan and Ted Forrest. Johnny Chan, Phil Helmuth, Eric Seidel, Robert Letter. I admire a lot of players. Lane, what was your relationship with Johnny Chan? When I came to the Hall of Fame in 1997, I, when I won it, I got kind of, I, I don't think cocky is the word, but I jumped in a 300-600 game, head up with Sam Grizzle. What a treat that was, boys. Treat Sam Grizzle. But then Johnny Chan jumped in the game and, and played for a little bit. And I actually did really well in the game. I mean, I was the only winner. I won pretty big. I think twenty six or 7,000. And Johnny Chan just looked at me and said, I love the way you play, kid. You're going to go places. So now when I came back down for the World Series, he jumped in an opportunity you know, to stake me. And the World Series cost a lot of money. And when he you know, took interest in staking me in the tournaments, I thought that was a pretty good morale boost. It's sure. He's just the greatest player living today. And in the first tournament, he actually he staked me. I, I uh, took second. I got heads up. Went to final table, fifty percent of the chips, and took second. Really? Scotty, Scotty went to third. But he come walking by my table as I turned over two aces, and the other guy turned over ace king. And flop came ten jack queen, putting me down to nothing. And uh, we, I mean, I they counted the chips down, and I still had some left, like three or six hundred, not very many. And that's when Chan looked down and like, shrugged like, oops, that was like a 3,000 no limit tournament. And uh, when we counted down, I had a few chips left. When he came back to see me later, we were down to three tables and I had uh, 30, 40, 50% of the chips. Wow. Like, he's wow. like just, you know, in amazement. So right there, you know, started a friendship relationship, I guess. And no limit is such a fast game, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> Lane, when did you first start playing poker? I started playing poker when I was illegally 18. And I... Came out professionally probably 1997, 28 years. That's 28, probably. Do you remember the first poker game that you ever played in? No. It's I probably mean, when you were about 10. I played a lot of <laughs> poker games, yeah. I mean, uh, there's a lot of first poker games that I played in. You know? Yeah, I know. Home games, kid games. Benny, let's flip the pages here a little bit. Let me ask you a few questions. All right, Lane. So tell me about your uh, family, Benny, uh, starting out the World Series, how it got started. A couple of friends got together and played a big game, but there had already been an organized tournament in Reno previous to that. What year was this? For, I think the first World Series was in like 1970. That's right, 70. It was 70. 70, 71. Yeah, I remember those days. <laughs> That's when I knew I was going to be a poker player, when the World Series came. In 1970, you were like two. I was titleless. <laughs> I met your grandfather. When Montana? Oh, you yeah, already bought a newspaper off you when you were a paper. kid. <laughs> you told me that story one time. I remember that. Yeah, he comes strolling into town in white limo. We're in Montana. We don't have limos in Montana. <laughs> in Miles City? Yeah, in Miles City. He's on the way out to the ranch for the bucking horse sale. He's there every year. God, dude, we, if everyone in Montana doesn't buy this video, it'll be a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll forward to all addresses. So, Benny, tell me, how was it like growing up uh, around the casino and a grandson of a casino owner? The life. The life? It was real normal, actually. I didn't go in the casino that much till I was older. 
What did you do? Yeah, I lived every day, just normally, like, and you know, did kid things. Uh, Vegas. When you don't know any different, you don't know any different. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. I gambled when I was like 16, playing blackjack. I, I should have started playing poker then. <laughs> yeah, hindsight. Yeah, hindsight's 2020. As opposed to 2121. Get it? Well, yeah, I get it. <laughs> believe me. Uh, how do you feel about winning five titles now? Five bracelets. I need five more so I can pass Helmuth and Doyle. You know, I don't know if it took those guys so long. How long has the World Series been around? Since 30, 1970. 34 years, these guys got nine titles. Wow, I got five in six years. Just see, do the math there. I don't have a lot more, man. But you're... <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, winning titles are great. It's all about I, the titles. I love arguing that point with people that you have five World Series bracelets. Yeah. It's, it's real strong if you think about it. It is. Well, I think... Uh, Went in two back to back. Nobody's done that. Some went in back to back, back to back, and back to back years. That's back to back. I'm telling you. <laughs> Lane, why do they call you back to back? Back to back is a great name to have. Back to back to back to back would be better, but back to back. I, I think three different times I've won back to back tournaments, and then I won back to back years back to back tournaments. So back to back fits. My last name is Flack. Back to back Flack. It fits, I guess. <laughs> Lane, what what's your advice on young players and how to, how they can learn the game? They can read books, they can play online, they can start out small and just, you know, you got to put in your time, you got to put in a lot of hours and, and uh, you know, know yourself, know yourself and what your capabilities are and your time and, you know, and you got to base your life around it because it will consume you. But uh, other than that, be very careful, be cautious, don't jump into anything too soon, uh, challenge yourself slowly. And you better be lucky. <laughs> lucky doesn't hurt. Now, when you started, and I know that we've talked a lot about this, that you've never read a book on poker. Is that still the, the same situation? Still holds true. Do you think that there wasn't as much reading material when you started as there is today, and that's why? No. Because really, there was only one book about poker for 20 years. Well, there's, you know, there's different kinds of books. There was books on numbers and strategies, and uh, I did this, I did that. But I came out and won a big tournament right away and then went straight to the top, you know, that next year, number one. And there was no reason for me to read a book on how-to. Because if I did, I thought it might screw up my how-to. Uh, so, uh, you know, I don't, you know, I don't want to make strategy with somebody else's strategy, so I, I just kept it simple. But you're more of a savant than most people, though. Thank God. But I, I don't know. I don't, I don't disagree with reading books or, or learning. You, it can never hurt to read a book, but I just I didn't feel the need. I mean, I may still. But One day. Like, you might write a book. Yeah, me write a book. I've had a lot of questions. <laughs> write a book, write a book. Soon. What are some of the things that you want to accomplish in poker that you haven't accomplished yet? Poker's getting so big now, just any major tournament that you win is, is uh, you know, is astronomical. It's big. I don't think you can ever win enough. That's one of the things that draws me to poker is there's a never-ending goal. Like, do you fantasize about winning the World Series or the, the WPT main event? Or it, it used to be, like, you know, a dream, but now... This poker is so fulfilling already that that's just a, you know another bonus, another credit to another notch in the belt. But obviously that's the uh, creme de la creme of tournaments. There's a lot of info out there and knowledge and and uh, philosophies and strategy on poker. Hopefully uh, watching this DVD will, will help you with uh, some of the stuff that you need to learn, or hopefully uh, help you at the tables. So uh, good luck. Thank you, Lane.